Hello. So we're back. And um, <clears throat> today we will do um, a mixture of topics uh, before we get on to uh, uh, dimensionless numbers and similarity and everything. I thought I would go over um, a few aspects of some, some of the things we've done before. In particular, we will look at, uh, we very briefly introduced the energy equation. You remember we, we talked about uh, the energy equation when we, when we uh, finished the last time. And our main focus there was to look at viscosity and uh, figure out that the dissipated energy energy density went as mu uh, say this kind of thing right where we really have d dui dxj plus duj dxi that kind of thing right but this was the main focus and 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 this uh, was a coefficient of viscosity the dimensions of which are grams like so okay so sometimes they call this a coefficient of dynamic viscosity and you'll see but keeping the dimensions in mind is very useful so um, so this was the main focus of what we did um, last time and um, what we will do today is is maybe write down we also remarked that we already had seen the energy equation in a slightly different guise uh, in, the, in, the, in the form of a Bernoulli constant where, uh, you know, uh, you remember this, right? So, so uh, the Bernoulli constant which is something like one half u squared plus constant. This is true, however, only for a streamline. And it's true for irrotational inviscid flow, right? And, and, and this is not the velocity potential, this is the gravitational potential. Please keep this in mind, right? This is also a statement of, of, um, a statement of energy conservation along a streamline. But what we will do today so we uh, along a streamline, along a streamline. So we said these two things. I just wanted to recap. What we will do today is try to write down an energy equation in the conservative form, just like we've write, written down, you know, the other equations in, in conservative form, um, uh, mass conservation, uh, momentum conservation, and so on and so forth. So before that, just to recap, the conservative form of writing down any, any conservation equation is is uh, partial time derivative, which means that the moment you see these kinds of partial time derivatives, you are, um, you know, uh, in, in, in the lab frame, right? Of the density of whatever quantity you're talking about, if you're talking about mass conservation, it's mass density, right? Plus divergence of the flux of this quantity is equal to zero, right? So suppose this was mass density, you would have And the flux of mass is, right? And if this was uh, momentum density, you would have uh, dt uh, like that. This would be momentum density and the flux of momentum density. Now this is divergence. Essentially what we're writing here is divergence. Uh, rho. We sometimes wrote this as an outer product. This is the same thing is equal to um, if we neglect uh, 
if we neglect uh, note, right. So, this would be the gradient of the pressure and this would be any external body forces. So, this would be the conservative form of uh, the momentum, uh, momentum continuity equation. Okay, this is the conservative form and uh, same thing. So, this would be 0 as such and you would be able to do that you would be able to write uh, write down the right hand side is 0 as long as you were able to pull this term in here and uh, this could be written as a as the gradient of a, a potential in which case you could write it down exactly uh, in the in the same form as as this exactly in this form to be precise exactly in this form okay now in a very similar fashion let's try to write down um, the energy equation in, in conservative form, simply by analogy with these other equations, it's, it's useful in conservative form. But neglecting viscosity. For the time being, at least for writing it down like this, I do not want to be bothered about viscosity, about viscous dissipation. This is what we focused on the last time, but for now, in order to write down uh, the energy equation in a neat um, uh, form, I, I would much rather neglect viscosity. Knowing fully well that if I wanted to add viscosity, I would, be, I would simply write this down on the right hand side. That is it really. So, in exactly the, in uh, going by this analogy, I can write down the conservative form of the energy equation as energy density. This is what I am going to write down now, right? So, the, I will write this, right? Um, of the flux of the same quantity if i wanted to um, i could also write i could also add a I, i'll tell you what this means and then like this okay this is the energy equation in the in in in, in conservative form um, uh, so so clearly what I am I'm, I'm, I'm implying by this is that this is the energy density and because I have got a u here, this is the flux of the energy density and this is another, another thing that, that we will come to in a second, right. Now, what I am really saying by writing this down is that this quantity w that I wrote here, this quantity w that I wrote here is w is the enthalpy per gram or per unit mass and this is equal to the internal energy plus p over rho. This would be the internal energy of the gas depending upon how many ever degrees of uh, freedom it has you would have uh, you know, uh, the formula would differ slightly. So, this is the enthalpy per gram. You can, you can think of this entire thing as something internal to the gas, right? So, that would be this, okay? So, this is the internal energy right here and this guy is a kinetic energy density of the, okay? So, you can see how I am able to, you know, the, uh, how I am able to simply write down the energy equation just like that. Uh, uh, simply knowing, um, uh, simply going by the general form of, simply going by this general form, okay. Now, uh, coming to, uh, right, so, so uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that, so going by the same token, uh, the quantity rho u times one half u squared plus enthalpy density, yeah, minus Sorry, this should not have, uh, this should not, this is just a coefficient. This, this entire thing 
is the energy flux. Again, this is nothing new. Right? So this has to do with the kinetic energy of the bulk, bulk flow and this has to do with whatever is internal to the fluid. Remember, the enthalpy is this. And this quantity that we have written anew, the T is the temperature okay? and you would be relating T to pressure and density using maybe a P equals mkT, uh, you know, uh, P equals this kind of a formula. So this would be the gradient of temperature and this would be the conductivity. So energy can be carried, um, you know, can be transported um, due to temperature gradients as well. You may or may not want to have this, okay? And, uh, and if you have this, then you need, you need an equation of state like so, okay? Because that's yet one more variable. You only have three equations and there's one more variable, so you need to tie things together, right? So, right. So this is all I really wanted to say at this point. You, it's, it's possible to write down an energy equation in a conservative form, uh, in, in a form uh, like this, uh, and, and, and uh, that is this. Yeah. It does not include vi uh, viscous dissipation. If you wanted to include the viscous dissipation, you would do so on the right-hand side here. Yeah. It does not include other forms of energy generation. For instance, suppose you know this was um, you know a flow of chemical, you know. So suppose there were chemical reactions as the fluid uh, was flowing. Uh, there were exoth exothermic reactions. That too, that's not a dissipation. That's a generation of energy, and 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 uh, you will be able to you know account for that on the right hand side, just like that. Okay, just like you were uh, wanted to include viscous dissipation, you you would do the same thing on the right hand side. Okay. So that's it really, this, this is yet another way of writing down the energy equation. Okay. So I wanted to focus a little, since, and one final thing before we, we uh, leave this topic, oftentimes in astrophysics, since uh, this course is uh, oriented towards uh, astrophysical settings, we don't appeal to an explicit energy equation of the form that we just wrote down. Instead, we just use something like P equals, now this K is not the same as the other K uh, uh, that, that appeared in the conductivity, where this would be an adiabatic index. And I deliberately write down the adiabatic, you know, in, 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 in quotes uh, to imply that uh, this need not be um, always five-thirds for, for always one as would be for a isothermal gas. Uh, it can be anything in between. But the point is you can relate temperature and, uh, sorry, you, uh, never mind temperature. For the time being, we're not introducing temperature. We can, we can relate pressure and density like this, in which case you eliminate the actual need um, uh, for, for an explicit energy equation and everything, all the information about the evolution of energy uh, is enclosed in, in this index right here. Okay, and um, if uh, uh, gamma um, equal to five thirds, adiabatic, in other words, the system is closed and any PDV work that you do appears in internal energy and vice versa. And if gamma is one, then it's isothermal. And in principle, it can be anything in between. And, and it's this gamma which tells you everything about the energy processes, energy dissipation processes. So uh, many times, um, you know, in, in astrophysics, uh, as I said, uh, we don't really uh, appeal to an explicit energy equation. Instead, we use something like this. And uh, it's just the way people do things. Uh, it's cheap, you can call this a cheap energy equation instead of, of, of writing down an explicit energy equation, I, I get away. Well, 
from a mathematical point of view, you can see if you tie down these two variables like this, there's, there's no scope to have one more, uh, one more equation, um, like an explicit energy equation, otherwise you would be over-determining things. Uh, so, so that's one way of looking at it. The other way of looking at it is all the physics of energy dissipation or generation or whatever is, is, is hidden in this index right here. So this would be a polytropic law, as you know, and, and, and the polytropic index, I should not call it an uh, adiabatic index, I should call it a polytropic index because that's what's uh, nor used in the literature many times. So the only thing is often it's uh, the polytropic index is not denoted by gamma, it's denoted by n, okay, so uh, like so. so all the physics of energy generation or dissipation or what have you uh, is, is encapsulated in, in this polytropic index, right? So that's that for, for um, the energy equation and I thought I would, I would next uh, uh, start talking about, this was kind of where we wrapped up the last time and the next thing I want to start talking about is um, go back to the Navier-Stokes equation, right? and um, talk a little bit about boundary conditions. Uh, how the inclusion of the viscous term, now we go back to viscosity again and how the in inclusion of the viscous term alters things greatly, uh, especially with regard to boundary conditions. So we'll stop here for the time being, thank you. <laughs>